It's salmon season. We're gonna cruise through five really amazing techniques that you can use at home to get like just perfect results really quickly. Perfect seared piece of uh, salmon in the pan, how to use a broiler and get a really nice broiled crispy salmon. We'll show you a sous vide one, but not just a basic sous vide one. This is how to sous vide salmon fast. We will go to the grill and I'll show you how to air fry one if you wanna make it like a salmon burger. So air fried too. Let's just dive right in. I don't have every salmon in front of me right here, but you'll notice this is a bit different than this. So to do a high level real quick, this is Wild King. And um, I'm sure you think about King being like the biggest, best, most expensive salmon. I think a lot of people also say it's like the fattiest. One thing that's for sure is all wild fish is gonna be a lot leaner than farm fish. So it depends what you wanna do there. You know, we talk about this off and on, you know. Do I only care that it's wild? Or do I want the best eating experience? Wild isn't always the best flavor, best eating experience, okay? I know that sounds controversial, but you know, there's pros and cons to both sides of this argument with the wild versus hatchery or farm-raised stuff. This is farm-raised steelhead. Steelhead, the farm-raised stuff is amazing. For me, it's like my go-to, I love it. This is the leanest of the lean, sockeye. That's that classic, small, skinny, long, lean salmon. You can see how lean it is and how red it is. They're usually this deep, deep, deep red because they go way out in the ocean. They're mostly eating shrimp krill. That's all they eat, you know? I bought some examples to show you what I'm looking for on different situations, right? So I bought some crappy stuff so you don't have to. I bought some good stuff so you know what you're looking for in a couple different versions, okay? Uh, let's just start with the packs, all right? Because I feel like most folks, that's what you see at your grocery store. So you've got the front end of the fish this is the collar. This is where the gill plate was right here and the head's right here. Then you've got some belly. This is the center cut. And here's a tail end. Some of them are even, you know, all the way down to the tippy tippy the tail, right? But here's the catch. Get it? Catch. They're all the same price. What the F? Why would I pay $16.99 a pound for tail piece and $16.99 a pound for center cut? I feel like what happens is people don't know what they're looking for and they think, oh, that's a nice about right size. That's fine. If you don't care, this video is probably not for you. But if you do care, this tail stuff, don't let the grocery stores get away with that. You know, they'll use it for something else. Let them use it to make like salmon patties or burgers or whatever. Or if you are gonna buy a tail, Tell them to sell it to you for less. That's crazy. Each of these has a little bit different use. This stuff right here, see how thick it is? Nice and thick and even. This is beautiful for presentation, uh, but the whole salmon's not made of center cut, but you can see a lot of the salmon is, right? So this front piece here, the collar, has a lot more collagen and a lot more fat generally. Really good broiling piece. I love this for broiling. Um, and this tail doesn't have the tip, so it's not nearly as bad as this one, but it still does get chewier and gristly here, okay? So leave the tail piece aside, let the butcher deal with that. So if you have fillets like this though, this is what I want everybody to know about fillets. When you go there and you say, hey, I want you know, enough for one person or two people or three, four, five, six people, whatever it may be, uh, tell them you want like, this is what I usually do. I, you know, like they'll say like two, three fingers per person or something like that. But t just get the piece from the front end of the fish. You're gonna be so much happier. And it's gonna be the same price and they're happy to do it. Four people, one, two, three, four from the front end. Oh yeah, this is what the butcher's gonna do. He's gonna go like, oh, okay, sure, where do we? How about this, does this look good? And he's like, yeah, that's the piece I want from the front. If you wanna learn more about which salmon to get and how to look for fish, we actually have a whole bunch of material and chef steps about how to actually look for whole fish too. So are the eyes clear, is the skin shiny, is the skin slimy, um, is the skin dry, what do the gills look like? So that's really what you're looking for as far as product goes. From here, you get home and you're like, what do I do with it? You're cooking. You can go in a pan, you can go in the broiler, you can go in the grill, air fry, sous vide. Let's do it though. First cooking method, sous vide. Not just basic sous vide, not just crazy ultimate sous vide. This is like rapid sous vide, okay? So when I cook sous vide, I always do like a little quick cure on my fish. Um, 
for, so seasoning. I've got skin on here and I, I'm gonna leave it on just so I can show you how easy it is to slide it off later, okay? I'm gonna throw some salt on this guy, bit of sugar. I'm gonna pop it right in the bag, okay? <laughs> a little bit of oil. A little bit of oil. I'm putting just enough oil so it doesn't like stick to the bag really. That's it. Okay, check this out. You know, you can do a little bit of lemon. Mmm, that's that lemon oil. It's gonna be so good. I kick off da, 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 with Jewel. What I'm gonna go for here is something that's a little bit more flaky because I'm gonna show you a quick way to make it like a toast, basically. I've got this temperature. It says 131. I'm gonna add 10 or 15 degrees to it, okay? Um, and I'm gonna set a timer for about mm, 12, 15 minutes. This is still about one inch thick on the thickest part. So this is 6 easy. Here we go. This is it. So easy. <whistles> Salmon's cooking sous vide. I'm just going to get some like toast going. A little bit of fennel. I'm going to toast this side. That fennel will start to like toast up and be like, oh my gosh, so good. Cool. My bread's toasting. Got some like little frisé and some chive and herb over here. Slice up some radish. Here's where our salmon's at right now. <clears throat> so again, normally with sous vide, you cook to core. I'm cooking much hotter than core right now. So you can see I'm getting that white albumin already. That's why. But what I'm doing is I'm looking for flaky salmon. So to test it, you know, you can just still got some spring to it. That's like good eating steak salmon right now. But I want to, uh, ooh yeah, starting to break away at the edges. Needs to go a little bit more, maybe just a few more minutes. Here's this though, check this out. What do you think? Let's go. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. You could just serve this salmon um, as is, right? Like you could put this on a, again, a salad or whatever. Everybody knows you don't have to skin fish before you start cooking. So here's my salmon. You could flake it in the bag. You could flake it with your hands. You could do whatever you want to do here. But this is what I'm, this is what I'm looking for. That like buttery, 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 flaky, flaky stuff. See how it just kind of like slides apart like that? It's so good. Oh my God. I'll just show you real quick. I'm gonna eat this one. This is so good. That's like one of the reasons I love steelhead. I know it looks all messy and crazy, but that's how salmon should be. Mm. Look, a little bit of that. Chive, 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 chive. A little dill, a little radish. Radish from the mandolin. You could like totally drizzle some of the fresh Oil, it's still really, 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 really nice oil. Lemony too. Who's jelly about that? Mmm. Mmm. That's quick sous vide. If I'm skinning something or cutting something, the direction I really want the cut to go, you point the front of the knife. So if I'm skinning something and I point the front of the knife down, it's gonna cut right through the skin. If I go too high up, it's just gonna take off too much meat. So what you do is you use the back of the knife to put a bunch of pressure here. And if this is the skin, I'm actually cutting, this is dramatic, it's usually about here, but I'm putting pressure on the back of the knife, cutting forward. This is like culinary school stuff. Put it in there, let it go away from you. So you don't splash yourself. So you use this side. Just put a little weight on them to keep them down for a minute, that's all. So this makes it really nice to serve if you score all the way like from here to here. But I'm not scoring all the way down, you know? Just like third of the way into the meat. 
steelhead or Atlantic salmon, or if you had really, really fatty king, this would be a great technique because they're so fatty. I wouldn't do this with like sockeye or coho or like a really lean king, you know? The big key with this one is I love putting it on a rack so you don't have to mess with it. So you can give it a little test peak, but see it's like lifting up pretty good. And then all I'm gonna do is give it a little bit of support that way. Oh gosh. Come on. There's five techniques. Again, go to Chef's Apps to get the whole detail and the whole recipe. But I hope you found that really helpful. See y'all later.